Hello, and welcome back to Midwest Charge. Unfortunately, uh, this is a video I didn't want to make. <laughs> Let's get into it. As I'm sure you saw in the title or thumbnail, uh, unfortunately, the BP Pulse Travel Centers of America site in uh, London, Ohio, it's down, it's, it's offline, it's completely broken. Um, as far as I can tell, I haven't been able to find an explanation. Um, there's, I don't, I don't see any communication from BP Pulse. Um, the only reason I even uh, thought to check on it was that I went on PlugShare and the PlugShare has a live status of the chargers and the live status said that none of them were functional, which seems super strange. So I came over here and sure enough, they're all offline. Um, it doesn't appear to be a software glitch. They're all just 100% powered down. Um, I can't see any emergency disconnects or anything like that. Um, any like site level, you know, stop switches like you'd find at an Iona station. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on here, but the fact that these chargers are down is just a huge bummer. Um, it's just not been a good day for Alpitronic hyperchargers in Ohio. <laughs> um, on my way here, I'll insert a, uh, I'll insert a clip here. In a yeah, you can see here the battery's at the right temperature, but for some reason, it's just only providing about 400 amps. It seems to be stepping up extremely slowly, but I had to stop at the Springfield, Ohio Iona Rechargery, and for some reason, it was only running at like a little over half power. Uh, I was the only one on site, so it wasn't a site level limitation. I wasn't sharing power with anybody, so I don't know what was going on there, but uh, yeah, this is just a huge loss. Um, I think that BP Pulse's general strategy with putting down uh, these new Tritium PKM150 and Hypercharger uh, HYC400s from Alpitronic is a fantastic strategy, especially with such large installations, 8, 10, 12 stalls or the Giga Hubs that are going in at airports across the country, particularly on the West Coast. Uh, it's super interesting, super innovative, and I think they had a really good thing going here. Um, I greatly, greatly enjoyed stopping here on my or in initial review of the BP Pulse chargers. Um, they weren't perfect, right? They had uh, relatively low amperage limits, so I think they were limited to 380 amps or 350 amps, something like that. It was a weird a weird limitation because these Alpitronic chargers are capable of, of giving out 600 amps to two vehicles plugged into the same stall. So I'm not sure exactly what that was about. Maybe it was just, I don't know, a weird decision as far as site level power limits are concerned. Um, to avoid over provisioning or what was going on. I'm, I'm really not not sure. But uh, yeah, like I said, it's just not, not great. Um, the lack of communication from the CPO is what's most concerning, I think. Um, if a site goes down, you know, from Tesla or Electrify America, EVgo, Iona, they all try to communicate proactively with their users. They'll put, uh, you know, warnings and plug share, um, or the screens will display some kind of error message, or they'll uh, reach out on you know Twitter or some other social media platform to try to take care of it. But like I said, if, if they have um, reached out, I haven't heard anything. Um, I, I believe a couple of CPOs will even send an email out to people who you know have the app or whatever subscription type thing. Um, unfortunately, I don't have that for BP Pulse, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just a, a weird situation. So as far as I can tell, there's nothing wrong with the chargers. They're all in physically good condition. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, I guess charging is on hold here at Travel Centers of America in London, Ohio. We're halfway between Dayton and Columbus, Ohio. And I think this is a, a critical corridor that really, really needs a lot of charging. Um, in the past, it has been supported by just the four stall EV Go site that went online, I want to say in the beginning of 2023, and it was the only DC fast charger between Columbus and Dayton for a long time. And it's not the only one now. Uh, the TA BP Pulse site here uh, was, of course, added recently, and there's a Ford dealership with some, I, I want to say they're Red E chargers, uh, but those chargers are offline. They're frequently offline. I don't like visiting dealerships, uh, relying on dealership charging, I should say. Um, but, uh, yeah, to see the largest site go down between Columbus and Dayton is, uh, definitely a big bummer. 
And while it's not a critical issue for me, because I planned my charge stops, I assumed that this charger wasn't going to work and I have backup plans, not every EV driver is going to have that. And I think if we're going to move forward into this uh, era of much higher EV adoption, then these companies need to really get serious about communicating when a charger is offline or non-functional. Um, if you go to a gas station and the, the gas pumps are not working, right? They'll put, uh, they'll put bags over the little handles or they'll have an error on the screen or they'll have a giant sign out or something to let you know, hey, this whole station doesn't work. Um, and it's really unfortunate that we don't see that same kind of treatment for EV charging. Again, especially when it's coming from a larger company, right? BP is, uh, as far as I can tell, a huge company and they, they have uh, gas stations all across North America and, you know, presumably in, in other countries as well. But, uh, yeah, there's no communication. I have no idea how long this will be. Maybe it's a temporary outage. Maybe these stations are going to be offline for six months. Unfortunately, no one knows. <laughs> so the best we can do is guess and hope that they learn from this experience and improve their communication with drivers. Because if I was driving a CCS vehicle or just a non-Tesla in general, right, and I was traveling uh, through the I-70 corridor between Columbus and Dayton and I wanted to stop, I would probably pick the largest DC fast charger that I could find. And this is it by a wide margin. Um, I think the Ford dealership has four or six chargers. The EVgo, that's what it is. The EVgo has four stalls, two chargers. And here we have eight stalls and 16 plugs. I mean, this is this is a huge, huge installation for Ohio. But uh, unfortunately, it's just sitting here dead. So if you've counter encountered these issues before, or if you've uh, you know been in the local area and you've tried out this BP Pulse charger, let me know in the comments below uh, what you thought of the station. And if you haven't, uh, let me know what you think charge point operators should be doing when a whole site goes offline. Should they be reaching out to customers? Should they say nothing? Should they put physical signs up uh, in the you know in the area where the chargers are? Um, I'd be really interested to hear hear your thoughts on that. It's a huge bummer this site is down too because the amenities are, are very, very good for the area. You have a whole dog park, a huge grassy area to hang out, there's trees to sit under, there's even a basketball hoop if you bring your own basketball. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's not a, it's not a busy area, it's, uh, you know, definitely rural. But as far as, you know, amenities, site layout goes, I mean, it's one of the largest and nicest chargers out here. So. I really hope to see them improve the reliability, their site reliability here, and uh, better communication in the future. I decided to do another charging session here on my way back, just to be sure. And uh, yeah, this is 1B, so we're using a different handle, same cabinet, and we're still getting the same just super strange behavior here. We started at 7% and it ramped up to 291 amps now. Uh, we're just getting 100 kilowatts. This is super weird. Let's try a different charger. 2A plugged in, starting communication. I do love this new addition to the UI here. It tells you how many seconds before the session times out. That is super cool. Um, any CPO that's watching, you should, you should do this. This is very informative to the customer. It's, I especially love how it's kind of a... Uh, a progress bar that goes away that way you can see visually hey uh, not only how many seconds are left but you know time is running out or you've got plenty of time to get your stuff sorted you know figure out the app start or the plug-in charge or your credit card or whatever so that's really cool I uh, just authorized my credit card so we'll go ahead and let it uh, authenticate connect fire up all the power cabinets do all that boring stuff and then I'll cut right back to it when it starts and here we go it has just begun charging and immediately ramps up to 600 amps. This, this is what I expect to see when I come to an Iona station. So for the second time now, and it was three or four months ago that I had cable cooling issues on that particular Alpitronic dispenser. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's just something wrong with that one in particular. So right here we're getting full power. I mean, like I said, this is exactly what you would expect. Just 600 amps absolutely flat out 
at about 220 to 225 kilowatts as the uh, state of charge and voltage in particular rises. We're gonna go ahead and stop here at 20% because that's all I need, but uh, what an absolutely ripping charge session here. I mean, we only charged a little bit. I think it was like seven or 8% to 20, but uh, yeah, less than three minutes. Still doing over 200 kilowatts, um, 10 kilowatt hours added, average 219 kilowatts, charge speed three minutes, eight to 21%. Started at seven over there, so yeah. Overall four minutes, because we messed around with stuff, but pretty solid session. See you in the next one.